Namaskaram. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to whoever is watching this expose around the world. Today I bring to you an expose about the enemies of India that are working overtime to depict India in bad light. And this was exposed, all of this information had come to light because of hard work of an organization called Legal Rights Protection Forum. This is an organization that is based off of Hyderabad and it consists of a huge network of researchers, ground workers who report, um, who investigate into uh, various activities of different groups that are inimical to India. I have with me Jerome Anto to discuss these issues. I must, if you can briefly introduce yourself before we move on to what we have. Okay. Uh, so my name is Jerome Anto and uh, I am from India. Uh, basically, a political, social and religious observer. Uh, I call myself a nationalist and uh, I'm a practicing Christian. Uh, I work uh, on issues which uh, uh, affect uh, the common Christian uh, and of course the whole country. Interesting. You introduce yourself as practicing Christian. But That's here we right. are trying to discuss about the propaganda machinery of Christians who are crying buckets that Christians are being harassed and they are facing persecution in India. And as we proceed with the talk, we'll talk more about those things. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and look at what we have here. Jerome Ji, I want to give a little bit of introduction to Legal Rights Protection Forum. Mo they monitor certain activities that are happening. One of the things that they monitor is the propaganda machinery that is trying to project India as an intolerant place for minorities. And out of that interest, they, they happen to log into a conference that was hosted by a group called Federation of Indian American Organization of North America. Now let's look at this fear corner a little bit. This is a, this is a group of Indian Christians in North America, as the name suggests. And they have a million plus members, according to their website. And they represent all the Indian Christians, irrespective of their denomination. So it's some kind of an interdenominational group, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostals, Roman Catholics. So anybody from Indian origin who is a Christian is part of, can become a potential member of this group. They have a monthly uh, conference where a lot of uh, people that are working for Christian cause in India and also their supporters in the US meet regularly. And this particular call that LRPF team attended was held sometime in November. There were two groups that seemed to have conducted this conference. Uh, one of them is Fiacona. Now the chairman of this group is the Mr. Prabhada. He seems to be having um, a very interesting past and I'm going to discuss about this with Jerome. He has roped in an organization called Persecution Relief. And when they attended this, um, this conference, it was a two hour conference uh, that had a lot of speakers, guest speakers, they presented a lot of information. And some of the things that they discussed, um, the narrative that they were trying to create about India, and some of the people that were part of that group uh, that attended that Zoom meeting, uh, it, it became a matter of concern. And LRPF team started investigating into what was discussed in that meeting. And the, the highlights of what were discussed, you will see as video clips throughout this, um, this expose. This webinar was known as Fiocona webinar on hate crime against Christians in India. Now this webinar which was meant to discuss the hate crimes in India, the initial part of the webinar 
covers something completely contradictory to what they're trying to establish. Let us listen to that part first. And this kind of a freedom is ex experienced by large numbers of people, although people do not report and wisely so these are not the times for us to give much publicity of what is happening and what the movements at large are doing. This is happening in states like Odisha and Bihar and we are involved in every state and so we have a handle on what is happening in, in, the, uh, in all the states and not all that we collaborate. And we have seen tremendous growth in states, um, in both in central and northern states, where there was tremendous resistance to the gospel until a few years ago. In one state, I will not name the state, we have seen a 600% growth in the last 10 years. 10 years ago, um, we had uh, less than 300 churches in that state. Today, we have more than 1,800 local churches with a baptized community. And so these are things that is happening and that is not being reported. I've been working in Punjab for more than 30 years. Punjab was one of the most resistant places to the gospel. In the last census, the only state where the government of India reported a growth in among the Christians is the state of Punjab. And uh, so that is just an indication where they could not avoid reporting what was happening in that place. And in another state, we in less than 10 years, we are into the fourth generation of churches. What do I mean by fourth generation of churches? Each time a church plants another church, that is one more generation. When there are four streams of church planting, that becomes a movement. And we are seeing that movement in one particular state, and we are into the fourth generation of churches in less than 10 years. These movements' purpose is to make disciples, to obey everything Jesus commanded us to do. Now that you heard the glowing report given by Mr. Walson Abraham, let's find out who he is. He is the founding pastor of India Christian Assembly that's based in Los Angeles. Interestingly, he also happens to be the grandson of Pastor K.E. Abraham, the founder of India's largest indigenous denomination, which is India Pentecostal Church. So what is Mr. Walson doing in Los Angeles then? Oh. He has founded another organization called India Gospel Outreach. So he is based in Los Angeles. While being in Los Angeles, he also serves as the director of India Bible College Seminary, where hundreds of students are trained each year for full-time ministry to ensure church planting in all the 28,000 plus zip codes in India. So he, they want a church planted everywhere. Now, in addition to that, he also wants to create churches among 3,000 plus castes and tribes in India. And they also want uh, to plant churches for Indian diaspora in other nations. So this is Mr. Walson Abraham for you. I'm honored to have Jerome as my guest here because he has a lot of insights into these nefarious activities of uh, the militant groups, Christian conversion groups, like he calls them. Jerome, what are your thoughts on what this person is reporting here? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to be on your program. Uh, I am really happy to have uh, gone through the uh, the webinar, uh, the video what uh, LRP have brought to our notice. Uh, why I'm saying I'm really happy is this, because uh, for a long time I have been voicing out uh, the, uh, there is a, that uh, the uh, religious freedom in India is, is a very exclusive one. 
and uh, everybody has a right to practice religion freely in spite of that there has been uh, much linking much linking on on, on india uh, saying we don't uh, have, christians don't have religious freedom that's a big lie because uh, christianity as we all know is flourishing in this country there is adequate freedom to practice and profess uh, so uh, if this is something which i am not able to accept uh, as a christian uh, there are if you if anybody wants to check uh, uh, how is the churches doing i think they need to google out and find out each of the cities how many churches are there in uh, in india that itself will is adequate proof that uh, christianity is doing well uh, by the way they want to do it uh, as far as uh, this webinar is concerned i am really happy because uh there is a late, lot of data points that was thrown uh if i had whenever i have thrown data uh in terms of christianity in terms of growth of christianity in terms of the uh the modus operandi on conversions uh, i have been uh, uh what you, uh, i have been uh, uh rebuked on the rebuked on the same but today yeah, we you, have if you can if i can add just one little bit to this information that you're talking about church is growing in india there's if you actually lose if, when i went through the webinar that that I, that we have that that we picked up the first part of the webinar they actually boasted they actually said that in the past 5 years the church has grown uh, in some places 800% okay their church plantations have grown to such an extent so what you're saying is is true because on one hand they're crying wolf that indians uh, the christianity or minority christians are being persecuted but they also giving glowing reports in the same webinar that christianity has increased and in fact they said punjab has seen great leap great progress they have, they're seeing uh punjab being converted into christianity and their growth is is beyond what they expected they are all celebrating it uh so what what you're saying is correct you you are talking about christianity growing in india on one hand and through the other side of the mouth they are also trying to cry and say that the religious freedom is suppressed and let's let's Absolutely. talk about what you Absolutely. have what reports you have absolutely so uh, uh one of the things what a um, uh, lot of people are talking is this uh, christianity has failed in india conversion is not successful i recently saw an article which said that uh, uh, christian conversion business uh, conversion has not succeeded and uh, vhp and bjp are crying uh, false uh, which is baseless because i i felt that that is a deceptive uh, very deceptive article that was written and a lot there was a lot of buzz in the indian uh, in the indian media on this second thing is this uh, when i said the data uh, yes whatever you quoted is correct because i see leaps and bounds of data being projected not by me uh, but the very church leaders who are i guess uh, uh, evangelists uh, who are millionaires who who are uh, who are having clout uh, who have who run huge churches whose huge seminaries uh, in fact uh, i a lot of uh, the people who spoke on this uh, webinar uh, pumped up uh, and uh, said that how much of uh, how many seminar uh, seminarians they have how many pastors they have and what is the current population of christians in india uh, in fact i remember in two shows earlier i had very blatantly told a minimum population of 5% is what uh, christianity is uh, while it was debunked saying that it is only 2.3% uh, just to call uh, in mind uh, those people who are aware of the population statistics in the last uh, uh, census 10 years back christianity was 2.3% and when people asked me i said it is it should be nothing less than 5% today i myself fell off the chair because uh the this credible information which is on the webinar which says that the conservative figure of christians in india which includes crypto christians is anywhere between 6 to 8% can you believe it 6 to 8% is a conservative figure so is 10% a figure that everybody needs to assume you know the conservative estimate is that there are at least 6 to 8% that 
proclaim Jesus Christ as their Lord in India. So if 2% will be focused and committed, we can bring about the change. And so I invite you this evening as we begin this webinar to pray as you have never prayed before. They also talked about some uh, Berkeley, US, Ber the university at Berkeley, uh, saying that 2% is enough to change the entire face of, of a movement, okay? And they, are, they have more than 2%, five times 2% is what they have going by your records. And even if it is a minority, and we are indeed, quote unquote, uh, in terms of statistics, a minority, God will begin to do a work. Prominent sociologists, uh, professors from Berkeley and other places have again and again reiterated that it takes only 2% of a given population to be focused and to uh, be determined to bring about a change in a nation. So we need to understand that a focused minority can accomplish much. Before we see how all of this narrative of celebration is going to change into melancholy, we will listen to somebody who is even more important. His name is Mr. Prabhudas. He is the chairman of Fiacona. Um, my name is John Prabhudas. I currently serve as the chairman of the um, board for the Federation of Indian American Christian Organizations. It's about uh, representing the anxieties and the interest of over uh, 1 million Indian American Christians uh, from across North America, uh, including Canada. And uh, we are based in Washington, D.C. Started uh, The organization began um, as a response to the attacks on Christians in, in the Kandamal districts of uh, uh, in the state of Gujarat in 1999. Uh, the organization itself was registered in 2000. It's been 20 years uh, now. Uh, we are getting into 21st year. Um, uh, many of our members who are part of the original uh, incorporation are still actively involved with the, our organization. Um, uh, our main focus is uh, to talk to the uh, officials in Washington about the concerns of um, Indian American Christians um, and what we uh, think of uh, our interest in India and how the, the political situation in India is developing. Um, those kind of things. So, I had a, an opportunity to meet with uh, Shibu Thomas, um, I believe three years ago, in Washington, D.C., when um, when he visited uh, the first, attended the first uh, international um, conference on religious freedom that was put together by the State Department. Uh, about 80 plus countries uh, and the foreign ministers of from 80, 80 plus countries uh, attended that conference. Um, we were part of organizing it, helping the State Department in, in several ways to to get that started. This was the first time um, as such a, an event was held by a major power, uh, not to mention none, no less than the United States. Um, with that start, um, during that time, I met uh, Shibu and his uh, friend Roy, and uh, they have been a very great resources for us, and uh, since then, I have come to know him personally. Um, and he also attended the second um, annual conference uh, hosted by the State Department. The third annual conference, it is being held currently hosted by the government of Poland. Uh, they have come forward to host this event um, this year. And this particular seminar, uh, webinar, we'd like to say, is actually held in consultations as with the, uh, the third annual conference hosted by the government of Poland. 
So this is a side event being held um, to support that conference hosted by the government of Poland. Um, as um, Shibu himself knows, we had one serious uh, concern or um, grievance with the past two conferences uh, hosted by the State Department. Uh, we made our displeasure known to the organizers, uh, to the Secretary of State and others, because they refused to put India on the agenda for various political considerations. Um, we were not happy about it, but I think that may be changing. We hope it will change soon. Now, as you can see from what Mr. Prabhudas is saying, he seems to be extremely displeased that the machinery that he has worked with, the, the senators or the lobby group that he is working with in Washington, D.C., has not met his expectations. So what was his expectation? His expectation was that India should be placed somewhere very high as a country of concern or a country that is persecuting minorities, a country that is not having religious freedom. Now, from his talk, we have to take a couple of things. Number one, you know that Mr. Prabhudas has been working with a lot of lobby groups in the United States, in the Washington DC area. To do what? To make, to depict India in bad light. His objective is to place India in the list of countries of concern by the government funded, state funded uh, US organization. This is, uh, this rates countries based on how they're performing uh, when it comes to treating minorities, Christians, uh, especially in different countries. So let's go back to who this Prabhudas is because he seems to be a kingpin. As per the webinar, uh, what I watched, uh, what I see is he is the chairman of Econa and uh, he represents a million Christian, Indian Christians in the US. Uh, apparently, he has a lot of clout uh, with the, uh, several congressmen. Uh, in fact, I was reading an article dated some time back, uh, which is also from a credible resource uh, source, uh, which was an article that was published. Apparently, Prabhudas has aliases, couple of aliases. He's called in by different names. But one thing what he has done is this. He apparently lobbied, lobbied with the U.S. Secretary of State some time back to ban Prime Minister Modi from coming. Uh, I am sure everybody would recall uh, Sri Narendra Modi was the Chief Minister of Gujarat and at that time there was a conference that he had attended the U.S. and uh, Mr. Prabhudas was also instrumental in lobbying with the several U.S. congressmen including the Secretary of State in ensuring that Prime Minister Modi, uh, Mr. Modi does not come to the U.S. That's right. At that uh, time, Ms. Rice was our Secretary of State. Uh, on, yes, I think she had, she had large reservations. She didn't want this to go off. I mean, she, she tried to stop this as much as possible because she was in favor of uh, a good relationship between U India and U.S. Because, uh, because of the progress that we are having. But I don't think in spite of her efforts, they tried to, they seem to have succeeded for a little bit. Correct. Uh, this is what Mr. Prabhudas's credentials are. I also read somewhere that he has been blacklisted from uh, entering India. All right. So that, that fits the puzzle because what it seems to me is that he has been targeting uh, Mr. Modi personally, right, for a long time. And now when, Ms. when, when uh, Sri Modi ji has become the Prime Minister of India, he could, not, uh, he could not stand it because now it's like he's already boiling with so much hatred for India, BJP, Modi ji. So he had to somehow get, into the, get under the skin of people in India to create commotion in India, create a narrative against India. So he's been working overtime ever since uh, Modi ji has... Uh, has become the Prime Minister of India. So, uh, Mr. Pravdas's objective, his end goal, his agenda is to make India look bad in the international circles. And now, in order for that to happen, he has roped in an organization called Persecution Relief. 
Now, this is an interesting one. Persecution Relief, as we see, is a registered nonprofit in Texas. The president of this Persecution Relief is Shibu Thomas. And he claims that he's actually now in Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal, running an organization called Persecution Relief again. But this persecution relief in India is not registered as any kind of society. It is a loosely formed group of WhatsApp messages. And uh, the persecution relief has 300 WhatsApp groups with more than 50,000 people in these groups. And uh, we have state and state coordinators in every state. As a matter of fact, this particular group has been started in the year 2015, right when BJP came to power, right after BJP came to power, which was in 2014, this group was put in place immediately to work towards creating a wrong narrative about India. I'm honored and privileged to be a part of Fiacona for the last three years uh, involved in the board. And uh, thank you, uh, my elder brother, John Prabhudas. Uh, he had been a great influencer as far as uh, my whole work is concerned. And uh, he had been a great uh, tool of blessings in the past. And through him, I met uh, uh, Koshi Josh, the current president, and of course, uh, George Abraham, who is a great uh, skilled writer, and he had been highlighting all these issues in the Congress uh, uh, internationally and nationally. And I appreciate all the hard work put in uh, by Fiacona, especially uh, regarding the uh, country of uh, particular concern. They want to push India. And I know right from the beginning, they were trying to push India from tier two to tier one. And uh, John Prabhudas and the entire team had been working hard in the Washington DC office to uh, do that. And to a great extent, I appreciate uh, their hard work was rewarded uh, by India being put in the top 10 countries. And a few senators have signed in as far as uh, making India a country of particular concern. So. Hopefully things uh, may, uh, because any effort which we make uh, with a good conscience will be rewarded highly by the Lord. And uh, I am honored to be a part of this whole organization. Uh, India has never faced a situation like this in the last 74 years of Indian independence. And uh, uh, our figure specifically shows that because in the last quarter, there was a rise of 115% uh, because in 2015, uh, Third quarter, we reported around uh, 73 cases. And uh, third quarter, 2020, we reported around 153 uh, cases of Christian persecution. So total from 2016 to uh, September 2020, I personally had recorded more than 2,224 odd cases. Uh, this is still September. And uh, out of that, around 21 people have, been, have laid down their lives uh, for uh, uh, gospel in India and uh, persecution relief has the privilege of adopting all these martyr uh, families uh, as our own family. We support them every month for their basic need. I just came back uh, from Rajasthan where uh, Pastor Mahesh, uh, who was serving with Sharon Church in India, um, he was asked to climb uh, pole because he knew some electrical work and there was some problem in the village and he was asked to climb up uh, on the pole to fix the fuse and when he got up to the pole they intentionally switched on the line and uh, he fell down from the pole and he died and uh, I just visited that family uh, last week uh, and uh, the extent of uh, a harm being caused to these churches and the village people called a meeting in the evening and uh, the guy who switched on he was called and the other villagers were called and ultimately accepted that uh, he switched it on uh, because uh, some fanatics have asked him to do that and then they put a penalty of 2.5 lakh rupees uh, on this person who switched on and 50,000 was paid and uh, 2 lakh has to be paid in the next week. 
and uh, there was no case registered so village sarpanch and everybody came together and they came with this decision so legal rights protection forum did an independent research okay when they did an independent research they found out that none of these were true they they, they were not persecuted or they were not killed because they were christians these were random petty crimes um that a oh, hey. pastor was electrocuted in rajasthan okay that really was just an accident so we have to yeah. they tried to verify to see if he was even a pastor the actually shibu thomas went there and took a picture and published that picture everywhere saying that he went and visited this family and he's in tears he's crying he's rolling on the floor because of what has happened to this family but that has really nothing to do with christian persecution yeah actually uh, i want uh, i think uh, it's an interesting thing because uh, i saw the way he dramatically uh, explained that whole saga of one pastor uh, mahesh who climbed an electrical pole why would a pastor climb an electrical pole okay and then apparently somebody else uh, switched on the light and then he got electrocuted and then he was dead uh, and uh, it, this even uh, didn't uh, see the light of uh, the law it was closed up within the uh, within the circles uh, this is something which uh, which i am i am not able to understand because today uh, everybody has a phone and today we also know that uh, a smartphone news travels wide and far if this was something to do with persecution i'm sure there would have been national media putting spotlight on this particular case i also want to draw you draw an attention to the audience uh there is a video which which i do not know if it still exists uh which was uh, which was uploaded around 4 months back this was also uploaded by persecution relief as a persecution of christians this was during this pandemic pandemic time uh there is an incident where uh certain christians uh, christians are burying a, a a person in a in a in a land and the people who came people came and asked the local people of the village came and asked whom are you burying and with whose permission uh, i'm sure people in the us and across the world would understand you can't bury anybody and everybody in any any place so the villagers came and questioned those people whose permission have you taken to bury this person here in this land okay apparently it looks like a, a non a bury a place where you're not supposed to be buried and the sixth, second question that is being asked is will you christians allow a hindu bo, a hindu to be cremated okay. in okay. in your in your cemetery okay. which means that it it appears to be a violation a violation and that has been made a case as persecution this is on youtube i saw this uh, particular video when i saw this uh, webinar and uh, persecution to lip case that's true so yes yes every everything so if you do all you have to do is scratch under the surface to to unearth all the stories that they are propagating persecution relief it is a a propaganda machinery which is collecting information on the ground about every crime possible and trying to see if in that crime there is any christian name okay so that now they can paint it as christian persecution to pass it on to this prabudas who is sitting in washington dc lobbying to blacklist india or black face india shame face india okay the, what is their ultimate goal they want to enlist india as a country of concern okay the nation that has been most tolerant of all okay this is a country that has invited people from the persecuted lands way back when none of these religions even existed such Absolutely. a country today they are sitting in as a small group of hate mongers in washington dc and trying to create a narrative that india is a country of concern that minorities are getting tortured and this prabudas is not able to enter the indian shores because he's been blacklisted so what is he doing he found a person who can act as his puppet 
and that puppet happens to be shibu thomas okay so this persecution relief news propaganda loosely held so called organization that is working on the ground in india to protect the minority rights of christians is run by somebody called shibu thomas shibu thomas is from he is based in madhya pradesh okay and he was the one he who started this as soon as modi ji came into power now look at that so you have already established that you want to sp spread a certain kind of narrative and the moment modi ji has come in you want to start off so that is the kind of uh, treachery that these people are doing uh, there are plenty of from july itself around uh, eight people have been killed uh, for their faith so uh, as pastor walson was saying um, uh, thank you for uh, joining pastor walson uh, we need you in this whole movement because ipc is one of the biggest organization with uh, more than 10000 churches across and uh, i had been a part of the uh, council of ipc national council and the international council too and i appreciate uh, you coming in uh, at this point and it will be a great help to us uh, as far as uh, moral support is concerned so i myself had been involved with bjp for the last uh, more than 10 12 years now and uh, i was heading the minority wing of christians uh, for the second largest state of india madhya pradesh and uh, the uh, shivraj singh chauhan the chief minister had made a special wing for christians uh, and i was made in charge of the entire madhya pradesh and uh, i had also been a standing member of the special invitee for the minorities as far as state is concerned Uh, but when the 2015, when the Lord called me into this ministry, uh, it was very difficult to step down from my current position as far as uh, uh, all these privileges which I was enjoying. But uh, I had no option but to hear the voice of the Lord, and uh, that's how persecution relief was born. It was very, very tough to step into something like this, which I had no clue about what persecution is, what is the intensity, and uh, all this stuff was uh, I was not even keen to, because I was into I am still into business, and uh, uh, I was politically well connected, and all these local MLAs and MPs were great friends of mine. But when the Lord called me for this ministry, it was real tough to. Uh, get out of the comfort zone but from 2015 uh, mid onwards it had been like swimming against the tide i had to go through many issues as for us uh, uh, because of this taking this task uh, i had received uh, more than 10 income tax notices fcra notices uh, uh, i was attacked many times and then the government of madhya pradesh gave me police protection because my life was in danger i did not take the police protection and uh, i had been facing a lot of things which i had not made public but uh, today because it's a closed meeting i would like to tell you that uh, it's like literally swimming against the tide i said we have handled 2224 cases from 2016 january to september 2020 and i'm privileged that the us government has uh, taken our statistics and questioned india in the latest uh, report of the us government and in the second paragraph itself they mentioned our name and they put our statistics that 527 cases has been recorded by us in 2019 and uh, that again backfired and uh, uh, because of that uh, uh, the external affairs minister of india has refused our statistics and they said it's all fake uh, we have a massive network across india and that's our strength uh, i have more than 300 whatsapp group uh, uh, connecting uh, um all the 28 states and nine union territories of india and uh, we persecution relief has 300 whatsapp group with more than 50000 people in these groups and uh, we have state and state coordinators in every state and we have district coordinators in more than 300 districts out of 734 we have district coordinators in more than uh, 300 districts and uh, recently we uh, appointed district coordinators in almost nine states of india and uh, uh, we have committed people working across the country 
And that had been our strength because we are the people mostly who break the news. As far as any Christian persecution happens in India, uh, we are the people who break the news. And we help the church in four ways, uh, uh, prayerfully, financially, politically, and judicially. Uh, that's how we support. And uh, persecution relief, as uh, in the last year itself, we have distributed more than two crore uh, worth of rupees uh, to the persecuted church last year itself. Uh, and uh, we have never uh, asked for financial. Shibu, uh, uh, Shibu, if you could, um, the crores and lakhs, if you can, if you can convert that into millions and billions, it would be easy for people to understand. Uh, mostly, we uh, I use all my personal funds as far as uh, whatever I earn from my business. I use hundred percent funds for the persecuted church. We don't have a donation page on our website. But uh, as I told you, we adopted all the 21 martyr families, support them every month. Uh, apart from that, uh, we provide uh, financial, like uh, the biggest problem today, what India is facing is excommunication and boycott and excommunication. Uh, like uh, everybody knows Congress ruled state, uh, Chhattisgarh, uh, Kondegaon division uh, in Basta district, uh, around uh, 18 houses were vandalized and uh, these villages were thrown out of the villages and uh, we wrote an open letter to Sonia Gandhi and uh, last week I received a call from Sonia Gandhi's office and uh, they have fixed an appointment uh, with the chief minister of uh, Chhattisgarh to uh, re-establish uh, whatever has happened and uh, our team went and distributed uh, 5,000 rupees, almost uh, $100 uh, uh, to each family because they're rooftops were all destroyed and we wanted to give them some asbestos sheets and uh, there are a lot of issues as far as financial part is concerned fcrs uh, you know that what has happened and uh, fia Kona had been doing hard uh, on addressing that issue and uh, fcrs and personal funds and all and uh, we have a great network that is our strength as i told you and our facebook page reached uh, last month uh, around 9.9 million people uh, through our persecution relief Facebook page. So that way we had been a little uh, influential as far as reaching these uh, messages to the country, India or the world is concerned. Uh, recently our partners, Church in Chains, uh, went and met the Indian ambassador in Ireland and uh, around 22 uh, TDs and uh, senators have signed a petition uh, for the Indian government and uh, the church and chain partner, our partner, they went and handed over, over to the Indian ambassador, Sanjay Kumar, uh, uh, a few weeks back uh, in Ireland. So Australia government has also spoken, United Kingdom government has also spoken to India based on our reports. So we had been influential as far as uh, um, making these incidents known to general public as such in India. And uh, there had been a lot of awareness as far as uh, organizations are concerned because we have uh, a network of more than 50,000 churches has partnered with us. And uh, almost all the major Indian organizations are uh, partnered with Persecution Relief. And uh, this is how we work, prayerfully, judicially, financially, and politically. And uh, we try to raise these issues with the opposition, uh, with the leader of opposition, like uh, before uh, him and Soren taking over as the chief minister, we met him and had a one hour meeting with him. And uh, I gave all the statistics which he raised in the house and uh, he has promised us to withdraw uh, or revoke the anti-conversion law in the state of Jharkhand. And, uh, uh, we had been approaching these uh, leader of opposition and highlighting these issues uh, in the parliament. Anto Anthony, a uh, member of parliament uh, from Kerala, uh, who is very close to uh, the leadership in Congress, has raised the issue in the parliament uh, recently based on our statistics. So we are trying to create an awareness as far as the church is concerned. The church was, uh, had no idea about what was happening as far as Christian persecution is concerned, but uh, I, uh, like I'm not boasting, but because of our efforts, uh, we had been uh, successful in making these uh, ordeals of Christians in India known to the world and to India.
So that had been our strength, basically. The network had been our strength. And uh, this is how we basically work. So as I told you, the biggest issue is the uh, excommunication and boycott of the church. And they were doing it very strategically planned. And uh, uh, it's very difficult for them to sustain. So we are trying to help them. And God willing, we are going to make the first refuge center in the world for the persecuted church. We just identified around 25 acres of land in India. And uh, we are planning to make the first refuge center uh, wherein I want that all these people who have no place to stay, I would like to accommodate them. And I think because Sonia Gandhi, we have made a, um, a whole report, an open letter, which is around five pages. I would like to list down the top 10 uh, states because uh, Uttar Pradesh is the number one state for the last three years continuously. And uh, from January to uh, October, we have recorded 92 cases of in Uttar Pradesh. So Uttar Pradesh is number one according to our statistics. And uh, number two is Tamil Nadu with 44 cases. And this is from January 2020 to October uh, 2020. The third is Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh has raised, uh, it was, they were nowhere in the last two years as far as the top five states are concerned. But they have jumped up. They have came to the third position. And uh, Chhattisgarh is 38 cases. Jharkhand has 35 cases. Then uh, Karnataka has 31 cases. And Madhya Pradesh has raised uh, from no cases, uh, around nine cases last year. They have come to 30 cases uh, as far as uh, Christian persecution is concerned. So if you ask me, where do you get the statistics from? We get this. This is our own statistics. We don't take the statistics from anybody else. What we record, what we maintain, that is the statistics which we get from the field. And all these 2,224 cases which we have recorded, it is our own statistics got from our own people who are on the field. And if anybody asks any details of this 2,224 cases, I'll tell you how we do it. When we get a report on a WhatsApp or a toll-free number, we have a 24-7 toll-free number which is circulated, it's 1-800-123-4461. We get regular calls on our toll-free number. We get responses on our WhatsApp. So when we get a call, we call that person, identify the case, speak to him, do a voice recording with him, takes uh, the proof in the form of pictures and videos. And once that is done, we do a recording with that person uh, of the whole incident. And we keep all these things as proof with us and then only we record these statistics most of the time and the error point is just maybe one person where somebody may fool us by saying oh uh, this uh, it would have been an accident but he'll say he got persecuted or he got beaten up to get that funds uh, so that's very rare because mostly the affected part is uh, poor independent pastors who work in villages so more than money they always look for people to stand with them in support uh, as an elder brother putting a hand over their shoulder they are not very keen in money but they are more keen in sustaining and going ahead uh, as far as these things are concerned so uh, uh, we that's how we record these cases and i so told you that uh, we have uh, uh, in the last uh, this year itself we have recorded uh, more than 457 cases till now and that's what we basically do. And this is how our network is. In 2016, we recorded 330 cases. Since 2017, we recorded 440 cases. In 2018, we recorded 477 cases. In 2019, we recorded 527 cases. And in 2020 till September, we have recorded around 450 cases of uh, Christian persecution in India. So this, this is a broad uh, uh, way of how we work. And uh, this is our network as far as uh, Christian persecution in this India is concerned. The fabric of India is being torn uh, as it was uh, so beautifully knitted, but the fabric has been torn. And you know that more than 50% are youth in this country and uh, uh, the outburst or the anger or the a poison which has been injected in the society has to stay long, even if government changes or it doesn't change. Now a lot of people give us money asking for our personal accounts. Persecution relief is also registered in US as a 501. 
C3 and a lot of Americans uh, support us in this ministry. And uh, just wanted to give you a rough idea, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shibu Thomas, uh, for enlightening us uh, with uh, the current situation in India. We truly admire uh, your work uh, on behalf of the persecuted Christians. And uh, I, re I recollect that uh, State Department used, as a matter of fact, uh, the statistics from your report uh, yes. in uh, one of those years. I remember that. Yes, last year, yeah. Yes, so we are grateful to you for that. And uh, I was uh, being uh, uh, asked to head the national, um, uh, to be made as the minority chairman for India. Two weeks back, uh, Sadhu came to me and uh, from the inner circle, and uh, they wanted me to be the chair of uh, National Minority Commission in India. So as far as 501 is concerned, we are not able to transfer any money from US to India now. Because my FCRA, I got around 22-point uh, questionnaire. Uh, uh, so if I answer these questions, then they will pick another 100 questions out of that. So I refuse to answer these questions, and I have uh, not renewed my FCRA uh, as far as India is concerned. So uh, this is the story. Uh, now, this Shubhu Thomas is giving us uh, a very contradictory kind of uh, image that he has worked with BJP and he was he was in minority morcha of BJP in Madhya Pradesh for 10 years and he said that he had a lot of connections with many political parties and he worked with many political parties in fact he was promised a good position in BJP but he actually uh, had to forego that just so that he could answer God's call of caring for the persecuted people and all of these things that he that he talked about uh, that he's he made the sacrifice to do what he's doing now we did a, lot, a little bit of research into whatever his claims were first of all he said he's been hounded his life is in danger but he's not reporting to the police I wonder why he would not do that if he has so many connections in India and he like he claims he worked with BJP for a long time and claiming that his life is under threat but he's not going to the police all of this seems like a story that he's trying to spin okay that is a matter of concern why is he lying what is the need for him to lie how can we believe the stories that he's spinning about the so-called persecution in India Meriji I, I want to add something on this uh... Uh, since you mentioned uh, Mr. Shibuda, Shibu Thomas, uh, and uh, he started having started this particular organization called persecutionrelief.org, which is just a, a website. Uh, his credentials, as per the webinar, is he was in the BJP minority cell for ten years in Madhya Pradesh. Okay, that's one thing. That is something which the BJP needs to uh, to take cognizance. Second thing is this, he apparently was uh, pitted to be, that's what he claims, to be the Minority Commission Chairman of India. He also tells that he has tremendous clout in India. He knows MLAs, MPs. He apparently has written, written to Sonia Gandhi and she wrote back in two days time. I see photographs of him with Rahul Gandhi. Uh, I, and he also said that uh, whenever he, there is issues, he has called up a bureaucrat to get his problem resolved. So we are not talking about another ordinary person. We're talking about somebody who is well connected and uh, somebody who has tremendous clout and uh, a political clout. And uh, there is definitely an agenda uh, on, uh, uh, on India. And uh, very strangely, uh, post 2014, when Mr. Modi came to power, in is when Mr. Shibuda start, uh, Shibu Thomas has started this persecution relief uh, program. I am in many of the Christian WhatsApp groups, and in one of the WhatsApp groups, I find there is one number which says persecutionrelief.org.